Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about what do a data scientist do. Now we are basically going to discuss all the activities that data, science, data scientist basically does in a machine learning use case or let it be a deep learning use case. So I have noted down some of the steps and this particular steps covers all the pipelines of a life cycle of a data science project. So the first step to begin with is basically data collection. Now this particular step is very very important. Each and every data scientist, whoever is working for a particular machine learning use case, has to you know, participate in the data collection. Now when they are participating in the data, data collection, they will also be stakeholders involved. And those stakeholders will be having some domain knowledge about the project that we are trying to do over here. With the help of them, we will try to extract the data and they will be providing references, lot of references through, it may be a third party API, it may be through web scrapping and many other activities. Now, Whenever we are using third party APIs, some of the APIs will also be paid, right? And some of the APIs may also be free. And with the help of web scrapping, as you know that if the website already provides the web, web scrapping facilities, we can basically extract all the data. Now, whatever data is basically collected in the data collection stage is basically raw data, okay? It will not be a very clean data. It is basically a raw kind of data. So in the second step, what the data scientist does is that the team will start, you know, making themselves available for the data preparation. You know, data preparation basically means that we'll try to clean the data, we'll try to uh, make this noise, we'll try to remove the noise in, from this particular data, we'll try to clean it and make it in a, such a format that it can be very easily applicable or used for any machine learning algorithms. Now when I say cleaning this particular data, that basically means now in this particular case we have a raw data. It may be in JSON format, it may be in XML format. So what we try to do is that we try to convert this into CSV format, or some better formats, let it be an Excel sheet, right? So that here the data is basically represented in tabular form. So in this particular data preparation, a lot of use of pandas will be coming over here, numpy arrays will be coming over here, and all the different types of functionalities in pandas, whenever you're working with data frames, series, all the things will be coming over here in case of data preparation. Now always remember guys, while we are doing data preparation, just before this, in the data collection stage, big data engineer team also participate into this. What they will do is that after the data is collected, they may store that in a Hadoop database or in a big data database, right? It may be stored in a NoSQL database also. It may, it may store it in a relational database also. So it depends on the kind of requirements and uh, based on the project itself. Now, after the data preparation, and uh, we, we try to do the exploratory data analysis. Now, when we are moving to the exploratory data analysis, first of all, we have to perform all the feature engineering activities. So in the data preparation, what you will be doing, you'll also be handling null values. You'll also be trying to clean the data based on that. But when you move to exploratory data analysis, now feature engineering will be involved in both the stages. In exploration, exploratory data analysis, you will try to include statistical analysis on the data. Okay. Now statistical analysis helps you to understand the data. And that is very important when you are solving any machine learning use case. Here, when you are collecting the data, you may be having millions of records. And how that data is basically there in the terms of visualization, in terms of, let me just take you an example, in terms of probability density function, in terms of histograms, how the data is basically distributed. And there are various other libraries like Seaborn, Matplotlib, which is used in this exploratory data analysis to understand the data. And when we are doing the exploratory data analysis, some of the very important things like handling missing values, handling uh, bad data, how we can basically handle it. Suppose if we have if we have some kind of data in our data set which is in completely in different way. Like let me just give you an example. Each and every record is basically having NAND value. Suppose suppose one of the one of the record is having question mark. So these are some kind of activities we try to clean it during the data preparation. Again, in exploratory data analysis, we'll apply statistical analysis to understand the data how the behavior of the data is basically there. One, and a lot of diagrams, a lot of visualization diagrams will be created. Let me just give you some examples. You may use a pair plot in Seaborn, you may use box plot, you may use Wixker plot, and different kinds of plots to understand how that data is basically distributed. And after that, evaluating and interpreting EDA results. Now, as you know that each and every use case, is based, there is a stakeholder basically responsible, I mean involved, in that particular use case, right? Now, you have to specify what you are trying to do. Suppose you want to handle some NAND values, you want, you want to replace some NAND values with something else, right? 
and that is only possible after you do the exploratory data analysis because you understand what is the distribution of data how the data is basically distributed so in order to replace that you have to provide this results why you are replacing with something else on what basis on what how is the distribution of the data and then you will you have to specify this results to the stakeholders to make them understand what you are doing in this particular step right so you evaluating and interpreting edia results and apart from that sharing this results to the stakeholder so that you can move ahead to the next step which is called as model building and model testing and remember guys this three this three steps will be taking more than 35% of your time of a project life cycle more than 35% now if i say that if there is 6 months or available for performing this particular project more than 2 months will be gone in this three steps itself because you have to clean the data you have to do exploratory data analysis you have to understand apply different statistical analysis on that data to perform some feature engineering so all these particular steps will be done in this now and remember guys after doing feature engineering you also have to do feature selection in this because it will be possible that each and every feature will not be required for solving this machine learning use case so you try to apply different statistical tools like statistical analysis like correlation pearson correlation uh extra tree classifier to understand which feature is most important okay we cannot take all the number all the features from suppose in my data collection i have 1000 columns should i take 1000 columns to solve this particular machine learning use case no right in the feature selection will understand which all independent features are directly correlated to our dependent feature okay and there is a lot of other techniques which we basically apply in feature selection also after that when data is basically clean my data is ready it is present it may be present in a tabular format i have all my independent features i have all my dependent feature the next thing is that i'll start doing doing my model deploy model building sorry now in model building i will also perform hyperparameter optimization so suppose if i have selected that i am going to apply xgboost and there is various ways to select which model will be better okay you can basically perform cross validation on multiple models but just remember guys it also depends i have also made a video which model to select for which kind of use case just have a look onto that video it is already present in my machine learning playlist so in model building we'll select one algorithm and there in on that also we'll pro- perform hyperparameter optimization we'll perform cross validation apart from that we also perform some k fold cross validation stratified cross k fold valid cross validation we'll try to find out the accuracy now remember only accuracy is not enough guys okay we have also have to find out what is the confusion matrix or uh, what is the roc aoc score right what is the accuracy score all these things and we have to find out whether those accuracy is basically good or not now suppose just understand that i just missed one more point during this feature engineering process during this three stages we also have to handle the imbalanced data set now if our data set is imbalanced then it, it may impact the type of algorithm that i am using because my algorithm can get biased to one type of output right so after that we do model testing in model testing whatever we what we do is that whatever test data whatever validation data we have done we have taken from this particular data set the real data set i will try to test it and see how is the performance of that particular model okay now after that once we see that the accuracy is good it is giving a good test result then we will go finally with the model deployment now for model deployment you have various tools one is flask you should have you should know flask framework because this is very compulsory guys uh, suppose if you are trying to use docker you are trying to use kubernetes you are trying to use aws ec2 instance at that time it is better that you know this flask framework this actually helps you to create a rest apis and that rest api can be consumed from any front end application i have already made videos how to do model deployment by using flask i have not shown you in aws but just understand if you know how to create a model deployment process in your local computer with the help of flask it is the same thing you'll just move that file to your aws ec2 instance or other other instances there are new and more different techniques that are coming with model deployment like kubernet and many more uh, and that you have to explore a lot okay about that and finally after the model deployment is there we try to optimize the model how do we try to optimize the model we will ta- take a threshold time like one month or 15 days and we'll continuously uh, see the accuracy whether the accuracy is good or not with the with the real world test data that we will be getting after the model is deployed into the production and in short this many things the data scientist will be participating and th- 
in each and every step there is a whole lot of learning guys always remember and the most difficult thing will be the feature engineering part where you are performing in this three exploratory data analysis because you need to apply a lot of statistical tools and you'll get to know or you get to learn a lot of things in this because you need to know how you can play with the data right so that is the most important thing and these all are the basic steps and finally you do the model deployment and finally after the model optimization suppose your model is not giving good results then it may such happen that you again have to start the cycle again and it will continue unless and until you get, don't get a perfect model now it may so happen that in the future the data will again be changing right now suppose i have i have deployed one version one of my model but after some time it may happen that my data will be getting changed okay there will be a lot of changes in the data but the features will be same but there will be a different values for that particular data so again after 2 to 3 months i'm just taking it as, a, as an example after 2 to 3 months again we create a next version of the model by the new test data that we have new collected test data real life test data along with this particular data and again we try to train the model we try to deploy the next version of the model and we always create different different versions so that it will help us to roll back if one version is not working well so in short these were the basic steps what do a data scientist do uh, you involve in a lot of discussion with the stakeholder at this particular stage because this is very important guys and this will also help you to increase your domain knowledge because you should know what kind of data you require to solve any use case okay so these steps are very very important model building model testing is also very important yes but i think this first four steps are very very important many people are comfortable in doing model building and model testing but in these steps they lack okay so you have to be perfect in this particular steps again if you want to be perfect in this learn python learn pandas now if i am taking this as an example of python programming language always have a very good understanding of pandas when you are working with pandas know what is data frames how you can basically work with data, data frames in different ways uh, let it be series let it be data frames and many more so this was all about this particular video uh, i hope you like this particular video i'll see you all in the next video uh, please do subscribe the channel share with all your friends uh, thank you one and all